Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us move on to the next problem so in the following compound the stereochemical descriptors in the following compounds the stereochemical descriptors HA and HB the relationship between these two hydrogen atoms are whether they are enantiotopic, diastereotopic, homotopic or constitutionally heterotopic. So, this is very similar to the one what we have seen earlier. So, we will very quickly go through how to assign that. So, here again the same exercise we have to follow. We have to replace the hydrogen atom. So, if you look at in this particular molecule, we have a oxygen atom as shown here. Here also is the oxygen atom. This is basically the hydroxy group. So, we have two hydroxy groups that are present and with respect to this hydroxy group also we are going to see how the actual arrangement changes. So, these are all the two hydrogen atoms present in one of the benzylic group and here is another two. So, in the first two arrangements you can see one hydrogen atom is pointing towards the observer, one hydrogen atom is pointing away from the observer. So, this becomes little bit easy for, uh, difficult for us to visualize. So, if we rotate the molecule, now you clearly see the two hydrogen atoms, one is on the left hand side, another one is on the right hand side. So, that way it becomes easy for us to visualize and uh, if you look at these two arrangements, the hydrogen atoms, one of the hydrogen is in close proximity to the hydroxyl group, another hydrogen is actually away from the hydroxyl group. So, we can very well say that there is no object mirror image relationship exist between these two sets of compound because both the cases the hydroxy group is actually present only on the one side. So, that means there is on the left hand side only and now with respect to that if you look at the what is the relationship between these two hydrogen atoms. So, the one hydrogen atom is in close proximity to the hydroxy group another hydrogen atom is away from the hydroxy group, no object mirror image relationship. So, when there is no object mirror image relationship exist, then we can say uh, we do not even have to look into non superimposability. So, that also is not required and the second thing is this molecule is actually chiral in nature. So, if you look at the benzene rings, so we have uh, two benzene rings uh, attached to that basically the naphthalene unit here and another naphthalene unit here. So, these are uh, approximately perpendicular to each other that is how it is present. So, there is a axial chirality present in this particular molecule. So, that is the reason these two compounds are basically the two hydrogen atoms relationship is basically diastereotopic in nature. And let us move on to the next compound. So, here we are going to identify the relationship uh, between uh, the hydrogen at, uh, between these two compounds. So, whether these are homomers, diastereomers, enantiomers or conformers. So, here again uh, let us visualize the molecule in a three dimensional one. So, there it becomes very easy. There is a hydrogen atom here and there is a methyl group. So, this is the carbon atom attached to three uh, hydrogen atom is shown here. And, uh, in the other case, we have the hydrogen atoms on the left hand side. In the first one, we have the hydrogen atom on the uh, right hand side. So, if you look at these two compounds, you if you very carefully look at the hydrogen atoms, you may look at like okay, there is some object mirror image relationship exist. But unfortunately, if you look at the entire molecule, you will understand that the alkene unit is actually uh, present on the left hand side in the first compound and in the second compound also if you look at the alkene unit, this is the alkene unit that is again present on the left hand side only. So, we can very well say there is no object mirror image relationship exist between these two compounds and of course, this compound is also having chirality. So, that is the reason the relationship between these two uh, hydrogen atoms are what we can say is the two compounds which are given uh, in the previous one, they are having a planar chirality in this particular molecule and these are basically diastereomeric compound because there is no object mirror image relationship exist between these two compounds and the molecule actually has chirality. So, two compounds having no object mirror image relationship and they are also non superimposable are called as basically diastereomers. So, 
here these two compounds which are given have the relationship is basically diastereomers. And uh, let us move on to the next problem. So, here we are going to find out uh, we have uh, a compound is given here and it is going to be oxidized with the hydrogen uh, nitric acid and uh, water and that provides couple of products. And we are going to find out what is the relationship between the different products that will be formed in this reaction. So, this is not a simple uh, look at the molecule and uh, give a configuration what is the thing, but here we have to do one additional uh, reaction and after the reaction we are going to see what are the relationship between the different products that are going to be formed. And uh, one more thing what we have to say is it is not that uh, whether we have a diastereomer or enantiomer, we also need to find out whether it is optically active or it is going to be optically inactive. So, that is also we are going to find out. So, that means there are various additional things are given to this problem. One is we have to carry out a oxidation reaction that is part number 1 and 2 we are also going to find out what is the relationship between the different products that is formed that is 2 and 3 we are also going to find out it is whether it is going to be optically active or optically inactive. So, 3 things are going to be found based on that only we can answer this problem. So, there are 4 uh, multiple choices are given for what are all the different types of compound that will be formed. So, whether they are optically inactive as it is a racemic mixture. Maybe there are two products A and B are going to be formed in this reaction and A and B are basically optically inactive because the, it is a racemic mixture both the compounds one is having a right uh, plus uh, rotation the other one is going to have the minus rotation or vice versa that is the reason we are going to have, have whatever the product that is going to be obtained as a mixture is going to be optically inactive that is one. Another one is they are optically inactive, but they are meso compounds. So, that is also the second one and the third one is they are optically active as it is a single diastereomer because we are going to get only one product, but it is going to be optically active. So, that is the third uh, uh, answer and the fourth one is optically active as it is a single enantiomer. So, we have to find out what is the correct answer for this question. So, let us draw the Fisher projection for the final product because this is a oxidation reaction we are using a strong oxidizing agent nitric acid. So, this will oxidize both the hydroxy group and the aldehyde both will be oxidized to the corresponding carboxylic acids. So, this is what is going to be our oxidized product. So, this is answer number 1. So, the oxidation leads to 2 carboxylic acids. Now, we have to find out what is the configuration of each uh, chiral center and then we are also going to find out whether it is going to be optically active or inactive. So, what are the different types of product that will be formed? We are going to see that and uh, there are 2 stereogenic carbons or chiral centers are present in this compound. So, we can draw the uh, Fisher uh, structures as you we have seen earlier also we can draw the Fisher projection for this particular compound and uh, here is the 3 dimensional structure of this particular compound shown here. So, if you look at here there is one hydroxy group pointing towards the observer. So, this is the hydroxy group which is pointing towards the observer. There is also another red group, the red is basically oxygen and in all the structures for our convenience, uh, we have not shown the hydroxy that is present on these oxygens. So, otherwise it will be looking little bit uh, complicated to view the molecule. So, in many structures even in previous cases, we have avoided uh, uh, showing all the hydrogen atoms that is simply because to have more clarity in viewing the molecule. So, the hydroxy group is present back. So, this is what is the hydroxy group that is present at the bottom uh, behind or away from the observer. So, this is the molecule that is shown. Now, we have to see whether there is any uh, object mirror image relationship or any planar chirality exist within the molecule or we have the two products that are formed are going to be optically active compounds or inactive compounds. So, if we look at the stereogenic center for this compound, the first carbon is R isomer and the second one is the S configuration for the second isomer. So, we have two different uh, configurations for this compound and if we actually look at uh, how the molecule actually exists, here is another way of uh, representing or looking at the same molecule. There is a hydroxy group, one 
here we have seen it is pointing towards the observer in the other carbon it is pointing away from the observer. So, that is actually shown here in uh, very clarity so that we can see that is as a line drawing structures in a much better way. So, if you look at uh, from this central carbon atoms, so we have a hydroxy group on one direction that is actually we are going to see from this particular carbon. So, from the center of this molecule, we have a hydroxy group pointing towards the observer. From equidistance, we have another hydroxy group which is pointing away from the observer. So, this is where the center of symmetry whatever we are talking. If you go to the other side, we have a oxygen, this is a carboxylic oxygen is present here and if you go in the opposite direction, again another carboxyl oxygen is present and uh, if you look at the hydrogen atoms, so this is uh, uh, moving towards up and if we are moving towards down, we again see the same hydrogen. So, in other words, what we can say is from the center of the molecule, we reach the same atom in opposite direction. So, we say there is center of symmetry in this molecule. So, when there is center of symmetry, you, are, you already know the compound is going to be optically inactive and this is nothing but a meso compound. So, the answer is whatever the product that is going to be formed in this case is basically optically inactive because it is a meso compound. There is a internal reflections present within the molecule or we can say there is center of symmetry that exists in this molecule. So, this is also shown here. So, based on that we can say the correct answer is B where the product, uh, the oxidation of the starting material leads to a meso compound. And let us move on to the next problem. So, in this problem we are going to see among the following the optically active compound is. So, we are given four different compounds, we have to find out which one is optically active. So, by looking at we cannot directly say let us go into the three dimensional structure and see how the molecule actually exists. So, that it becomes much easier for us to visualize and answer the question. So, now the question will come how are we going to do this in an examination because in our examination we are not going to be given uh, these three dimensional structures and other things. So, how we are going to see that? So, that is the reason we are going to visualize the compounds uh, in this particular session and based on that you can actually develop how to visualize the molecule and when a, when a bond is drawn towards the observer or when a bond is drawn away from the observer, how we can actually visualize that. If you can visualize that then it becomes much easier for you to answer the question. So, here we are showing exactly with the help of the three dimensional structure to visualize it. So, here is a molecule and we have two methyl groups that are pointing towards the observer. So, here is a cyclobutane molecule having two methyl groups which are pointing towards the observer and by looking at the structure itself you can exactly or very quickly say sir there is a mirror plane exist in this molecule. So, one half of the molecule is exactly the mirror image of the other half of the molecule. So, we had seen so many meso compounds earlier. So, this compound is nothing but a meso compound. So, we can clearly rule out this is not going to be optically active. Then let us look at the second compound. So, here the methyl groups are present on alternate carbon atoms. The first and the third carbon atoms we have the methyl groups. So, here again this is 1, 2, 3, 4 if you put the number. So, 1 and 3 carbon atoms are having a methyl groups and both are pointing in the same direction because here if you look at they are pointing on the same side, cis arrangement is present. So, here again if you look very carefully we can clearly say there is a plane, and planar symmetry is present in this molecule. So, we can exactly say this compound is also going to be optically inactive, this is also a meso compound. So, let us go to the next third one. So, in the third one, one of the methyl is pointing towards the observer, the other one is pointing away from the observer. So, this is pointing up and this is pointing down. So, when we draw in the planar structure, we can see that. So, here again if you look at this molecule, we have one more additional symmetry that means we can actually see the center of symmetry that is present in this molecule also. Here we do not have any plane of symmetry because if we cut the molecule into two pieces, especially we will see that how we can actually have a, here we have the center of symmetry and if we rotate the molecule 90 degree, then we can actually see there is also plane of symmetry that exists in this particular molecule. So, here is how you can see this molecule, there is exactly the 
central plane that exists in this molecule. So, this molecule has both the plane of symmetry and the center of symmetry. So, this is also optically inactive. Then what is the fourth compound? In the fourth compound, we have one methyl group pointing towards the observer in first carbon. There is one methyl group that is pointing away from the uh, observer on the second carbon. So, here we have one methyl pointing towards us, one methyl pointing away from us and there is no object mirror image relationship that exists in this molecule. So, that is the reason this compound is going to be optically active. So, of the all four the compounds, the three compounds have either plane of symmetry or center of symmetry. The fourth compound does not have any elements of symmetry. When there is uh, no elements of symmetry that is present, then we say this compound can be optically active and the answer for this question is only D. So, let us go out the next problem. So, in this one we are going to look at what is the correct relationship that exists between these two compounds. So, this is basically allene type molecule. So, we are going to look at in this allene type molecule, what is the relationship between these two compounds, whether they are enantiomers or diastereomers or homomers or constitutional isomers. The same exercise we are going to follow, we are going to visualize the molecule in the three dimensional view. So, uh, we can transform this compound into a three dimensional view as shown here. So, this is actually pointing towards the observer, this is pointing away from the observer and this hydroxy group is actually pointing towards the observer and uh, the rest of the molecule is actually in the same plane. So, if you look at the double bonds, both the double bonds are perpendicular to each other and they are in one plane. The chlorine atom which is shown in the green color is uh, pointing towards the observer. Here we have actually added the hydrogen atom to the oxygen. So, that is the reason you see the oxygen is little bit behind, but again this hydroxy group is pointing towards the observer and the hydrogen is pointing away from the observer and the methyl group is on the plane. So, this uh, double bonded carbons and this methyl group all are in the same plane. This hydroxy group is pointing towards the observer, this hydrogen is pointing away chlorine is pointing towards the observer and the hydrogen is pointing away from the observer. So, this is one of the molecule and if you look at the second molecule, this is the representation of the second molecule. Now, you see the chlorine is pointing towards the observer in the first one, chlorine is pointing away from the observer in the second one, the hydrogen is uh, the hydroxy group is pointing uh, in the front and here it is on the right hand side that is how it is uh, given here. It is uh, looking behind or here is the hydrogen atom which is pointing towards the observer the hydroxy group is actually pointing away from the observer. So, when we look at this compound, it looks as if like uh, these are two different compounds, but uh, let us have a three dimensional view of this molecule and we will also see a, a rotation of this molecule in three dimension. So, we had seen the rotation of this molecule and we have find it out that these two compounds are not two different compounds, but basically they are homomers are one and the same compound. Let us move on to the next problem. So, here uh, this is a little bit complicated problem. An optically pure isomer A and B, compound A is shown here, compound B is shown here. So, two compounds are there. These two compounds are treated or heated with uh, sodium aside in dimethylformamide. And the correct statement from the following is because we are carrying out a reaction, the bromine is replaced by the acide group. So, these are all the product C and D are actually going to be formed. And whether A gives optically pure D and B gives optically pure C is one of the possible solution or possible answer for this question. And the second one is A gives racemic mixture of C and B gives optically pure C. A gives optically pure C and B gives racemic uh, C, A gives optically pure D and B gives racemic D. So, basically what is the reaction that is happening is we have a bromine atom. This bromine atom is replaced by SN2 reaction and the SN2 reaction replacement leads to sodium aside. So, this is the uh, simple uh, transformation, the bromine is being replaced by aside. So, when the bromine is undergoing a SN2 type reaction, then obviously what we know is uh, the stereogenic configuration is basically the exactly inversion is ob, uh, observed in that particular case. So, that means if the bromine is pointing away from the observer, then the product has to have the acide group which is pointing towards the observer. So, this is the basic understanding if the reaction follows SN2 mechanism. The simple SN2 mechanism will lead inversion at the reaction center. This is what is the actual expected one, but in reality what is going to happen that is what we are going to see. 
So, this reaction is actually a little bit complex reaction. So, even though the reaction is basically SN2 replacement of bromide, but there are some uh, nuances added to this problem. So, while we are solving this problem, we will figure it out what is that the difference. So, here let us draw the char conformation to identify what are the product that is going to be formed. So, we have two starting materials. One is the let us go back to the starting one. So, this NME2 group and the bromine atom 2 are present in trans orientation. So, in this case we have a trans orientation for these two um, groups and in this one they are in the same side. So, this is a cis orientation. So, this is one thing we have to remember while solving our problem. So, let us draw the chair conformation for the trans isomer. So, first we have drawn the trans isomer. As we know in the uh, conformational analysis of cyclohexanes, a bulky group tend to stay in the equatorial position and here for the elimination to occur, one more additional condition is required. So, the group has to be properly positioned. So, we will see what is that mean by properly positioned. So, there is a equilibrium mixture that has to exist because for the leaving group to leave, it should be in the axial orientation. So, here in the first one, which is the thermodynamically stable conformer, the NME2 group is point uh, in the equatorial direction. Similarly, the bromine is also in the equatorial direction. When both are in the equatorial direction, the reaction does not actually proceed. So, both has to be in the axial position. So, that means the leaving group has to be in the axial orientation. So, that is the reason we say this equilibrium is actually more towards the starting material less towards the, uh, the uh, energetically uh, little bit unstable conformer where the bromine is in the axial position. But the reaction actually happens only when the bromine group is present in the axial orientation. So, that is the reason we see that this kind of uh, conformational flip actually takes place. And there is a lone pair of electron on the nitrogen atom. So, this helps the loss of leaving group uh, very effectively. So, in other words, what is actually happening is neighboring group participation facilitates this reaction to occur. So, that is the major difference between simple SN2 reaction and the neighboring group participating or anchimeric assistance promoted SN2 reaction. So, in this particular case, the lone pair of electrons are actually given to this particular carbon. So, we have a nitrogen having a positive charge, this kind of uh, tricyclic system is actually formed. So, the ammonium type ion is actually formed here and then the aside anion or the nucleophile attacks the st starting uh, intermediate. So, we have two places carbon here and carbon here. So, we have two different carbons on to which the aside atoms can actually attack. So, if it attacks the pink side that is uh, from the bottom side if it attacks, then this is opened up and the nitrogen uh, the NME2 groups to goes to the axial position. So, we get one type of product and in the other case the aside can attack from this side that means from the equatorial side. So, then we end up with these two uh, again these are in the trans orientation. So, if you look at here the NMA2 group is pointing up and uh, the aside group is pointing down. So, this is a trans arrangement and here also if you look at the aside group is pointing downwards, the NMA2 group is pointing upwards. So, here again we have the trans arrangement. So, both the products what we are going to get is the trans product and basically uh, we are going to get one is to one mixture of these two. In other words, these are basically racemic mixture that is what we are going to get. And when we talk about the cis isomer, in the cis isomer the bromine is actually present in the axial orientation. So, we do not need the ring flip as in the case of trans isomer, it does not happen. And this reaction is very simple reaction like a normal SN2 reaction. So, the aside attacks the bromine from the opposite side. So, we end up this is the typical SN2 reaction. And we end up with uh, if the bromine is in the axial position in the product, we are going to get this in the equatorial position. So, this compound is going to be optically active in nature. So, in other words, the answer to this problem is the compound A gives racemic mixture of uh, C 
but the compound B gives the pure mixture. So, the cis 1 gives the pure product, the trans 1 gives the racemic mixture. So, with that we can actually say this is how we can find out what is going to be the right answer. So, the major difference in this particular case is the neighboring group participation. So, because of the uh, neighboring group participation, we, do, we are not getting a simple SN2 reaction and we are actually getting a racemic mixture. So, let us look at the next two problems. So, here we are going to identify the stereochemical product that will be formed in the following reaction. So, we have a starting material, this undergoes an addition with HCl to give four different products uh, and we are going to find out A and B will be formed, both are optically active. So, there are four different products that are possible in this particular addition reaction and what are all going to be the product and what is the relationship between the product that is what is given here. So, the multiple choices given here are A and B will be formed, both are going to be optically active and in the second one C and D will be formed, C is optically inactive, but D is going to be optically active and A and C will be formed, both are going to be optically active and A, B and C will be formed, all are going to be optically active. So, these are all the four different uh, possibilities that are uh, possible and uh, this reaction is nothing but a simple electrophilic addition reaction. So, the first step is the addition of the electrophile H plus adds to the molecule and there is a hydride shift. So, this is the major difference that is happening in this reaction. We actually have a carbocation that is formed, basically it is the tertiary carbocation that will be formed in the initial step. The carbocation undergoes a rearrangement to give the tertiary carbocation. So, that is the reason and also this is going to be supported by a phenyl group. So, this carbocation can easily be stabilized by the phenyl group that is present here and uh, as we know carbocation is planar in uh, structure. So, the chloride ion can attack, the nucleophile can attack from the front or it can attack from the back. So, uh, when it attacks from the front, the chlorine atom is present in the front and the phenyl group goes behind and if the chlorine attacks from the back side, then the phenyl uh, group uh, becomes in the front. So, these are all the two products that will be formed and if you look at this molecule, this is basically there is a central uh, plane of symmetry present in this molecule exactly phenyl group and phenyl group both pointing towards the same side, chlorine, chlorine pointing away from the observer and there is a plane of symmetry in the molecule exactly in the center. So, this is going to be a meso compound, but this is going to be optically active. The compound D is going to be optically active and that is the reason here we can say the C and D will be formed, C is going to be optically inactive because it is going to be a meso compound and D is going to be optically active. Like that, the major thing is the formation of a carbocation that is hydride shift leading to this particular product and this is how we can actually say what is going to be the product that will be formed in this particular reaction.